Today we're building our own all-in-one liquid cooler, a completely modular cooling system that can be changed depending on your preferences and cooling requirements. Now, off-the-shelf all-in-one coolers have changed the way that we build custom PCs with premium cooling performance while also being quite easy to install. But what if the one that you wanted doesn't actually exist, like one with a massive 420 mm radiator or one with longer tubing for a bigger case, for example. Does it make sense to build something yourself from a financial standpoint or a performance standpoint? Well, that's what we're looking at today. Surprisingly, building your own liquid AIO cooler like this is a lot easier than you probably think, and it could make sense depending on your build. The majority of all-in-one liquid coolers come with radiators in the 120, 240, 280 or 360 mil sizes and are between 27 and 30 mils in thickness. Most of them are made from aluminium, which is not the best conductor of heat, but it is a cost-effective solution. For most users, these length, thickness and material constraints are absolutely fine, still offering some respectful performance. But what if you have a mid-tower case with a lot more radiator clearance than your typical all-in-one cooler can fill and on the flip side what if somehow you don't have enough clearance and what you need is a radiator that's a lot thinner. These are some use cases where building your own liquid AIO setup like this is an easy solution but you will pay quite a bit for it. More on that in just a second. First, let's take a look at some of the hardware that you'll need to know about if you're planning on building something like this. And let's start with AlphaCool's LT Solo Pump Lock. This is the main piece of hardware that makes this entire project possible. And contrary to the pump locks that you'll find on normal AIOs, this one uses common G1 quarter ports and also has a convenient fill port. It can also be opened up easily if you ever feel the need to clean it. But if you use the correct coolants, that's not really going to be an issue. I'm actually using this same pump lock to power the 240 mil custom loop in my gaming and editing machine so it's more than fine for a custom loop if you ever need to expand your cooling down the road and that's another benefit of using an expandable solution like this if you want to add a gpu block to the loop eventually that's something that'll be quite easy to do and not something that you can do with an off-the-shelf aio another reason you might want to build your own all-in-one liquid cooler comes down to the tube length or maybe tube style with common aios you're limited to black tubing usually sleeved around 40 centimeters in length there are some cases though where this just isn't long enough and lastly there is the benefit that if you do upsize or downsize your case you won't have to buy an entirely new cooler just swap to a new radiator that's compatible with that case now one reason you might not want to do this is because it's not cost effective at all. Unless you're going with an enthusiast cooling setup or you require an odd sized radiator that you can't get off the shelf or the longer tubing or the potential expandability benefits of building something like this, you really should just stick to regular all-in-one coolers. For example, a decent 360mm AIO will set you back around $150 US, but building an enthusiast DIY version with Noctua fans, a thicker radiator and custom tubing, do expect to spend around double that. Even choosing more conservative parts, let's say a slimmer 360mm radiator and let's say cheaper fans as well, that'll bring the cost down quite a bit, but it'll still be significantly more expensive than an off-the-shelf 360mm AIO. So a more conservative DIY setup is just not going to be worth it from a value standpoint unless you can somehow leverage the expandability benefits down the road. So the cooler that we're building today is a bit more of a premium solution. It uses a full copper 360 radiator that's 40 mils thick, three Noctua NFA 12 by 25 fans, premium compression fittings from AlphaCool, some white soft tubing from PrimoChill, AlphaCool's LT Solo pump lock, and some distilled water mixed with clear concentrate coolant. So starting off, the first step is to cut the tubing the correct length. Mine here are 40 centimeters, which is a good standard, but again, this is completely up to you and your case size. Next up are the fittings. For soft tubing, you'll want to go for compression fittings. I've used two standard compression fittings on the radiator and then two 90 degree rotary fittings for the CPU pump lock. Now for the coolant, you'll generally want to avoid opaque solutions if your goal is reliability and longevity. The last thing that you'll want is your CPU pump lock clogging up with solid additives. So distilled water mixed with a clear coolant premix is going to be your best bet. And to save you a ton of time filling the liquid 
liquid cooler at the end, we're going to start by filling up the radiator pretty much right to the brim. Next, go ahead and install your tubing, double checking that the fittings are tightened right up, both on the radiator side and the pump lock. Now comes the more difficult part, but still pretty straightforward, and that's filling up the rest of the loop and getting all of the air out. To do this, you'll want to open the fill port on the pump lock while it's elevated and switch between pouring the water in and getting the trapped air out. Removing the air is the trickiest part, but it just requires a bit of patience. You can pinch the tubing to force the air bubbles out and you can also move the pump lock up and down. Both work quite well. Once you can no longer remove any air from the loop, you'll want to actually turn the pump on with the port open, as there's definitely still some air trapped in there. It's a good idea to use some fan extensions so that you can create some distance to whatever you're plugging it into. Definitely don't want to spill excess coolant on a new build. I would allow at least 10 minutes for this part, pouring small amounts of coolant in to replace the air and turning the pump on and off to release any air that might be trapped. After that, close the port and your custom liquid AIO is complete. Again, this project is completely modular except for the pump lock and that's the funnest part in my opinion, especially when you start to consider the possibilities for huge high performance radiators that you just can't get in the form of an off the shelf liquid all in one cooler. I did some quick thermal testing on a 9900K overclocked to 5 gigahertz at 1.28 volts and thermals there seem to be right where we expect for a high performance 360 mil radiator. The modularity is the real king here though, seeing as you can customize this to however much cooling performance you require. So although this project does not make sense for your regular gaming build and especially those constrained within a tight budget, I do see this making sense for workstation builds, especially those running higher end processors and those requiring a bit more thermal headroom. Although it is technically a custom loop, there's no need for a discrete pump and reservoir and the setup is a lot cleaner, simpler and quicker. So if you are interested in potentially building something like this, I will leave all of the links down below to everything that you'll need. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.